That's a little odd. All right, it's story time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm in a 2017 A4. So um, the S3 is in service today for a new windshield. Um, I hit something before Las Vegas, so it's like a new windshield. And uh, coincidentally, it's right where basically. Uh, I can't pass state inspection because it's in my line of sight. So I'm getting a new windshield today. Um, and I was joking around with, with the lady who gives the cars out. And I was like, I'll take an A3 like I always get, basically. I get an A3 every time I take my car in for service. Yes, I have an S3. That's just their rules, I guess. Uh, so anyways, uh, I got an A4. So I'm in the brand new A4. Um, it's a lot different than the S3, A3, the MQB platform inside. It's looks like a spaceship to be honest with you. Uh, this one's got all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna make sure that I put all my fancy settings on as far as uh, drive select, put it on dynamic. Um, I'm turning the auto turn off off because that's annoying. Traction will stay on, it's raining today. Park assist will stay on. Uh, this has got Bang & Olufsen, silver trim, it's quattro. Luckily they gave me a quattro car, it is raining. Uh, so uh, I'm thankful that they actually gave me something that's better than a 1.8 front wheel drive A3. So uh, the shifter is really, really weird. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in drive. Oh, you put it back for sport. The park, you, have, you literally click a little button. You press the button in to park it, but I'm gonna go into sport mode since it's raining. Sure, why not? Adjust my seat one final time. And here we go. So. This is a first drive video because we don't have deals with dealerships or manufacturers yet. I'm doing this based on a rental car, so um, yeah, so let's do this. Alright, so it's a rainy day. I'm in sport mode. The car's got about 5,000 miles on it. It's pretty new. Uh, I put it in dynamic. It's pretty quick <clears throat> not as fast as the s3 i think but uh it was pretty quick for sure so um not bad not bad um i know a lot of s3 owners are basically getting rid of their s3s for these new cars including some of the uh some of the companies that have been doing a lot of research and development into the s3 They've actually been getting rid of their S3s. Uh, Manual Design is one of them, and then Tag Motorsports, which is a big, big retailer of all things Audi in Southern California. They're actually selling their S3 as well. Emmanuel sold his S3 uh, for an A4. So um, yeah, so this is interesting. So it's a bigger car, I totally get it. The S3 is really, you have constraints with the size. It's, it's tiny. Uh, I totally, totally get it. Mine definitely, it's a stretch when you want to fit more than two people in the back, I'd say. And um, yeah, it just is what it is. So let's see, uh, massive screen. I don't know if it hides. Let's see, there's a power button on the bottom right. No, I don't think this hides. Just kind of like the Mercedes, the screen is very massive and it does not hide. I mean, it's not like if you were to steal one of these, like you can honestly sell it. Like I can't walk into a pawn shop and be like, hey, yo, I got the screen from a from an Audi. You want it? <clears throat> the odds are it's completely useless. And that's the thing about these cars: the tech is so embedded into the uh, into the whole car system that I don't really think you can really change out the radio. At least to my knowledge, I mean, it's like it's so embedded. You have the driving system. You have uh, everything just you know just tied into the screen. So. If you want Bang & Olufsen, you better basically just pay for better audio. Or if you want better audio, you better pay for Bang & Olufsen just because you're going to be kind of stuck with whatever the car comes with. Fortunately, my car, unfortunately, my car does not have Bang & Olufsen. It has uh, the regular stuff. It's not horrible, but <clears throat> I could use a, you know, a little more. A little more bang. So anyways. Here we go. By the way, the dealership that services my car is uh, 
Hendrick, <clears throat> Hendrick basically they bought Audi South, uh, so they uh, they own the Audi South dealership in Austin, Texas, and like I said, typically I'm grateful to to receive a loaner car. I mean, don't get me wrong, they gave me a loaner car. You know, my car is typically just in for service; it's never anything major. Um, but yeah, today it's it's a windshield uh, and a state inspection at the same time. So. Um, I got this car, which is really, really fucking nice, to be honest with you. Um, I'm in dynamic, so it should have tighter steering, which it does. Um, let's see what else. The gauge cluster is beautiful. Uh, I really want to see it with nav, so I'm going to try to do some navigation here in a little bit. Um, yeah, the seats are pretty much the same leather that comes in the S3. Uh, it's that harder leather on the inside, the soft leather on the outside for wear, of course. Uh, it's got a whole lot of buttons in the top console. I think this car has, yeah, it has home link. This this one must be pretty fully loaded. I, I haven't looked at a window sticker or anything, but um, this one's got a lot of stuff in it, which is nice. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Tiny ass airbag. Literally, it fits in my hand, and by all means, I'm not... I'm not an NBA player, but this is a tiny ass airbag, but I'm sure it does its work. It probably does this. But anyways, um, nice car. Steering wheel feels pretty good. I wish it was flat bottom. I'm sure the, uh, I'm sure the S line or, no, this is S line, I guess. I'm sure the S car will have a flat bottom wheel. This one does not have a flat bottom wheel, but it's an A4. You, you don't expect to get a flat bottom wheel in an A4, at least. It'd be nice, but you know, I have a thing for flat bottoms, steering wheels, flat bottom steering wheels, not flat bottoms. That's just weird. Um, all right. So, it's pretty quick. It's no slouch. I don't even know anything about this motor. I guess I say a lot. I don't know a lot of stuff about fill in the blank. It's true. I have no idea about this motor. I don't know anything about it. Um, I'm assuming it's a derivative of some two liter motor that Audi has. I don't think it's the same motor that comes in my car uh, in the S3. I could be wrong, uh, but I know it's different. It's got different specs. I think it's got like the power is somewhere in between. It's like lower than 300, I think, but like higher than 250. I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty nice so far. I dig it. Now, would I get rid of my S3 for one of these? Time will tell, but basically it is a bigger car. It's, it's white on the outside. It has some funky ass wheels that are like diamond S. Like, I don't know. They're kind of ugly. Um, this thing would look nice on some RS7 or R7. RS4, um, 19 by 9s or if you want to be fancy with it, maybe some peelers. I don't know. Um, it'd be interesting for sure. Um, my seat still feels like it's not in the right position. I've tried to adjust it several times. I do miss the bolstering on the sport seats. These are these are the kind of seats that don't really hug you. They kind of hug you, but not really. Um, I like hugs. I'm a big boy, so typically sport seats are, mm, you know, either a love or hate thing for me. But the ones in the S3 fit me pretty good. Shifter is very smooth. It's a very, very large shifter. Um, I can see myself resting my hand on it, kind of like you would a manual, but it's flat. It's like a rectangle, so... It's a perfect size for a hand. I, I, don't, I don't know what happens if you hit the P while you're driving. I'm assuming nothing. But if you're at a dead stop and you hit the P button with your thumb on accident, uh, I can see you putting the damn thing in park, I'm assuming, because your foot will be on the brake. Uh, the climate control button is really, really nice. It's, uh, it's embedded. I have the same kind of uh, heated seats for three options. The climate button is really nice. It displays the uh, temperature in the actual gauge itself we have a really nice cluster the only thing is it's kind of hard to see the fuel gauge if you have the steering wheel where I have it which is where I would normally have it I can pretty much see half the fuel gauge that's kind of a poor design um, I can see the temperature gauge perfectly fine it's in the far left but the fuel gauge I can barely see um, let's see what else this lovely vehicle has 
whole bunch of options. Let's see. Oh, I just went to the map. That's beautiful. I don't care about the fuel gauge anymore. That's sick. Now, if there was a way to put this kind of cluster in my S3, I would be ecstatic. But I don't think there is. So, um, yeah. Uh, this is pretty cool. I believe um, the A6, the current and the current generation A6, has a similar layout with the nav being in the center. But this is a, the fully interactive cluster. So I'm gonna scroll through it. All I really have is my cell phone, which I already Bluetooth paired. I have the um, the map. I have the driver assistance, which is all the fuel stuff. I have driver assistance. I guess it's, I guess it has driver assistance in it. I don't know. Maybe it's like, hey, hey, this is somebody to the left that wants to smack into you. Um, we have the energy consumption, basically the fuel economy. It's like, hey, bro, you're running air conditioning. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm running air conditioning. Um, I live in Texas. Uh, Long-term memory. So this thing is really smart. It knows things. I wonder if it's recording what I'm doing other than the GoPro. Short-term memory. Aw. It knows if I'm using miles per gallon, average speed, time, and distance. The long-term is the same things, basically. Uh, we have fuel consumption. I'm at 20.8 miles to the gallon average. That is actually worse than my S3. Um, and when I baby the S3, I get about 22 to 20. Actually, I get 24 miles to the gallon in the S3 when I baby it, which is great. Considering my R32 got 18 when I babied it. So um, that thing was stock. We have date and time, very large in the center of the cluster. Um, what else do we have? We have the music selection that I have. It shows you the name of the song you have selected. I'm paired with my Bluetooth that so shows me the name of the song, artist, and all that stuff. Uh, and then the directory, like I said, which is my cell phone, all my contacts. And then I have the map, which is beautiful. Uh, this car has a lane assist, I believe, so I can see I can see when someone is close to me. Um, I get the little lights in the corner. I think it's called lane assist. In the corner of the uh, side mirrors, you have those little lights, the amber colored lights. I've always liked that. Um, it's a really cool feature. Um, I think the Audi one's probably a little better than the, uh, the little tiny rinky dink symbol you get like in the GM cars where it's like, hey look, look to, look in your mirror and see this tiny ass symbol, it's shining red. I think Mercedes has a little red arrow, that's not too bad, but yeah, these little, these little yellow lights are very passive and they, they just kind of flash, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, not bad at all. So first drive on this car, I've never been in one. The only time I've been in one of these cars was, uh, I believe it was sometime last year, um, the dealership at the time was a previous owner. They had one. Audi sent one down to Silver Car, which is a rental car company that rents you A4s. Uh, they rent you A4s that basically, uh, instead of renting a Kia Soul, uh, you can rent an A4. So they basically offer that service. It's called Silver Car. So actually, Audi sent a B9 A4, similar to this one, over to Silver Car for testing. Um, I'm a, I don't know if they put it in their fleet or what, but I happened to be at the dealership when the vehicle was off the truck. So I took some video of it and I posted a video of, of the turn signal, which is actually really cool. The sequence of the turn signal on Instagram, and it was on my personal Instagram, unfortunately, not in Rev Match, but that damn video got like 50 bazillion views it's hilarious because it was one of the only video footages of of the a4 before it came out these things came out a couple months ago so this video i filmed was sometime in in the winter um and then of course i've seen a couple around town previous to these to the release based on um audi doing testing or audi having their corporate meeting here in austin um i saw a couple of them around town doing airport runs and whatnot um it's a very quiet car it's pretty nice i'm in dynamic i don't even hear the dynamic mode that i hear in, in the s3 it's a lot more tame this thing must have like 40 resonator deletes or it must have 40 resonators and it also has i don't know if it's piping the sound in i mean i haven't checked the uh i haven't checked my options to see the sound let's see speed dependent volume it's on max that's basically where you pipe in the sound I'm, i basically went to my uh my main menu, my button, and I scroll down, this vehicle options, sound, radio, media, telephone, navigation, map, Audi Connect, Audi smartphone interface. Ooh, that's new. 
Um, and then settings. What's this Audi smartphone interface? No device connected which uh, supports Audi smartphone. I don't know if this is Apple Play. I don't think it's Apple Play. So I am not going to mess with that right now. So I'm going to go back. Alright, so making my final uh, my final turn in into work. I've been in S mode this whole time. I've been in sport mode this whole damn time. Who would have thought? Uh, I can kind of hear the sound of the motor, but I, not really. Uh, I'm in sport mode, so I'm downshifting it now. I'm in second gear at about 4,500 RPMs. That's no slouch, and it actually sounds pretty good. This thing would probably sound really, really good with an exhaust. Um, I'm sure if Audi Sport develops anything for develop that Resolute for the S3, they may make one for the A4. Considering A4s are sold at a higher volume, it's the most popular car they sell. So, yeah. So basically, pulling into work now. Um, pretty nice car. It's very soft. Um, I kind of like it. Um, I don't think I get rid of my S3 because I'm not done hooning. The world needs an S3 hooning around, legally of course. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'd get rid of my S3 for, their, for, their, uh, for one of these. Uh, it's a pretty nice car, it's pretty soft. Um, this would be a good car to share with, with somebody who's not so much a car enthusiast. So if you happen to have a uh, significant other who didn't really give a shit about cars but liked a soft ride, um, you could probably get away with one of these. The thing about the S3 is it's a little more harsh. Not too bad. I like it, uh, but I don't like it enough to replace my my current car. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, on my version of a first drive video, which is me driving my loaner car to work. Cool. Thanks. One thing I forgot to point out. To put this thing in the reverse, you literally have to sh put the shifter all the way forward, and then it goes in reverse. I'm using my backup camera, which I'd never really use just because I prefer not to. They kind of trip me out. Backup cameras are really weird. Um, I don't have one in the S3, although I really like would like to have one. Oh my god, I'm parking like shit right now. With and without the camera, I just can't park. Uh, Jesus take the wheel. Maybe if I was in a Ford Focus, it would self-park itself. JK. Alright, I'm here. Sounds good. No, I'm still in reverse. I put it back in reverse. How does park work? Okay, my, my foot's on the brake. There's a button on the shifter that says P. I'm going to hit the button. Alright, cool. I'm out. If any other car company wants to sponsor my drives to work, please, by all means, just... Send us an email. If you want to lend me a Mustang, a Yugo, I don't give a damn. Save me from putting miles on my S3. Let me know and I will gladly drive your car to work.